Hello and welcome to another Desk Side Talk with Mark. You may have noticed that we have gone two weeks now without a normal full-length podcast with the group, and that's just because of the timetable vis-a-vis PAX Unplugged. We're obviously going to be talking about PAX Unplugged when we get back from the conference, but the way the podcast lined up, it normally wouldn't have happened until about a week and a half after the convention was over, so I'm doing two off-week podcasts in a row here, and then we will do two full podcasts. So next week will be our PAX Unplugged recap, and then something else after that, and then following that we'll resume our normal every other week system with regards to the big podcast. But today I just want to talk about a couple of things, talk about PAX Unplugged, which I'm leaving for in just over 12, well, just over 16 hours now as I'm recording this. We're leaving in the morning, driving down from Boston to Philadelphia to attend that. I think it'll be a great time. I've been to PAX East three times now, and I'm, I am I enjoy that a lot, even though it's you know 75% video game stuff, and I'm not quite as enthusiastic about video games, I'll do, though I do enjoy them. But a PAX... about tabletop games is super exciting, and I I can't wait to go and meet everyone there, particularly since this is really my first convention as part of the Thoughtful Gamer. At the PAX East this past spring, I had just started the Thoughtful Gamer, but I didn't really do any press-like things. Now I've got the entire Friday afternoon lined up talking with publishers, uh, I got a little steady cam rig for my 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 camera on my phone. I've got a digital recorder, and I'm going to be interviewing publishers and designers and looking at the games there. So you guys all have lots of fun video stuff coming out in the weeks after the packs. But I'm making sure I'm saving a ton of time for gaming because I just love gaming all you know learning games and playing games i like and just playing loads of games in a day so uh if you see any of us there we're all going going to be wearing thoughtful gamer t-shirts uh we'll be around and stop and say hi if you want to play a game i'm sure i'll be down for it unless i've got something else to do there's going to be a group of i don't know seven of us everyone uh, all of them who you've heard on the podcast at one time or another and i think it's gonna be an awesome time so while i'm busy friday Saturday and Sunday, I mostly have completely wide open just to play games and have fun. So that's going to be a lot of fun and make sure you say hi if you see us there. Coming up in the future for the Thoughtful Gamer, I've got a couple of exciting things. First of all, I've been in contact with GMT, which as you probably know is my favorite games publisher. Uh, Published my favorite game, Twilight Struggle, along with all kinds of other great historical war games mostly. Not only are they great because of the games they publish, but because they still have that kind of small company feel. I look forward to their monthly newsletter every month because it's super informative. I like their P500 pre-order system. Every game they produce is just perfectly produced. It may not be a complete winner as a game. You know, I don't love every single game I've gotten from GMT, but it's a quality production and they seem to really enjoy the people enjoy their games. They enjoy, you know, interacting with their fans on social media. And there's a lot of passion there with, with the rest of the GMT fans. So for a variety of reasons, not just the games, they're my favorite publisher. And in their last monthly newsletter, they talked about how they wanted to work more with people who talk about board games, content creators, Uh, especially with regards to their little blog magazine production called Inside GMT, which they usually post articles from their designers talking about the games like design diaries. They'll do strategy guides, uh, kind of in-depth looks at their games, but it's all been in-house so far. Just the people who work for GMT or who are involved with GMT or the people who are involved with the creation of those games. But they wanted to open it up to others. So I contacted them and got approval to write a couple of articles for Inside GMT. They'll be posted also at The Thoughtful Gamer, so it's not taking away from what you see at the normal website, but it'll just also be there. So I hope that opens up uh, a bigger fan base for me. People will see the content there and maybe they'll take a peek at the Thoughtful Gamer. So that's exciting for me. Also coming up, we played Twilight Imperium 3rd Edition probably for the last time since 4th Edition will be here within the next couple of weeks the other day. And we 
filmed it and took a bunch of pictures so that I could make something I've been wanting to do for probably over a year, which is a slightly tongue-in-cheek Ken Burns-style documentary about a game of Twilight Imperium. So we did talking head interviews, we took loads of pictures, so we can do the little Ken Burns zoom effect on them, and I'll have some kind of you know, grim narration over the top. So I'm really excited to get back into video editing that, which I haven't done in earnest in probably five years and make this little documentary style TI three gameplay video. I think it'll be a lot of fun. It was an excellent game of twilight Imperium with lots of intrigue, very close. The scores were bunched together right until the end. So I think that'll be that'll be really fun to do, but I, I got to get back into video editing. So who knows how long that's going to take? I'm hoping before the middle of December, but we'll see. And then just the final topic I wanted to talk about is something that's been on my mind a lot, and that is negativity in reviews. And by negativity, I mean criticism. You know, saying oh the game is just not good at this kind of thing, or you know. Yeah, just be negative about a particular aspect of a game or even a game as a whole. And uh, I've been thinking about this for a while because it is kind of part of my MO here at The Thoughtful Gamer is that I'm, you know, I'm willing to be completely brutally honest about it. I don't necessarily enjoy it. I know that, you know, there was obviously people behind every game that's made who care about that game. And I don't, you know, I don't want them hating me because of it. But I have to be honest to you guys about the games I play. And so I've always thought that criticism and negativity is something positive in the board game culture as a whole. So I've been thinking about writing an article about this topic for a while. And then uh, people like us, who uh, Michael from there, who you heard on the podcast a few weeks ago, uh, wrote an article on this talk topic just basically explaining here's why we don't see a lot of negative reviews or a lot of criticism. And it comes down to really, it's just a pain to play bad games. There's a bigger cost to playing a game than there is say watching a movie. So if you watch a bad movie, you know, that's two hours of your life gone. But if you play a bad game and, you know, play it more than once, you're committing multiple people's times over a few game sessions and, you know, if it's a two hour game, that could be, you know, dozens of man hours, basically playing something that everyone knows they don't want to play. So that's, that's a difficult thing to do in the first place. And so you don't see a lot of negative reviews. However, you know, from publish or from reviewers who uh, get review copies, like I'm starting to, you get bad games on occasion. And I'm committed. And one of the things I tell publishers before they send me review copies is that if I say I'm going to review your game, in other words, because of this correspondence, you know, I'm agreeing to a review, a review copy, I will review it. And I'm not going to give them the option to not have my review posted just because I didn't like the game. I'm going to review the game because I think if I play a game and I plan to review it and then I withhold that negative information, that's at a disservice to you guys, to, to the people reading my reviews. But that said, you know, I can't play all the games. I can't, you know, there are thousands of games released each year. And obviously there's a big aspect of self-selecting out of bad games. You know, I looked over my, my games on my game shelf and really after years of collecting games, and I don't have that many games, but you know, I, I'm one of those people who researches a lot and tries to really choose carefully what games I buy. And I really have only bought one game that I would consider a complete stinker that I did not enjoy. And that was Machi Koro. Now there are a number of games that we haven't played a lot because you know, maybe I think it's it's a good game, it's all right, uh, and other people just don't like it. So I got rid of Seasons. I didn't think it was a bad game. I thought it was a pretty good game. But no one else in my group wanted to play it, and I wasn't that committed to it, so I ended up trading it away. It's been the same way with, with Splendor. It's, it's an okay game. I probably like it the least, but no one's particularly enthusiastic about it, so we don't play it a lot. There's a lot of self-selection there, so that's why you don't see a lot of negative negativity. But I think being critical of games is super important. Again, I'm going to write about this in more detail later, but I think there's a complete misperception on this topic that any kind of criticism of the game is either an a personal attack on the designer of the game, which is absolutely not true. I'll never attack the designer of a game unless they design something truly like morally grotesque or repugnant. But just because they designed a bad game doesn't mean they're a, that says nothing about them as a person 
other than, you know, they just happened to design a game I didn't like very much for particular reasons. But I think a lot of people think, oh, any kind of negative criticism of a game is against that person. No, I'll look forward, you know, unless they're releasing a string of games that I just hate, I'm going to look forward for to games that are sent my way or games which have a theme that piques my interest or something like that or gameplay that sounds interesting, regardless of whether or not I like their their previous games. So I think it's abundant. it needs to be made abundantly clear that negative reviews or negativity, talking negatively about a game, isn't necessarily reflective on the designer as a person. Well, I think a lot of people see it that way. The other thing is that a lot of people see, and I think this is because of the way the internet creates has created this kind of weird nerd culture is that any kind of negativity against a game means you hate games or you hate that type of game or you hate everything it represents like it goes deeper and people you know obviously you've seen trolls and annoying people on the internet get really rabid about things they love and they want to defend with every bit of their worth and they they almost take possession or they think they take possession of this thing they're a fan of but True criticism and good criticism and good negativity comes from a perspective not of trying to tear something down, but of of love for that thing and of optimism. Love because you love this kind of thing, and in this case, board games, so much that you want to see them get better and you want to see them stop doing these things that you think are harmful to the overall experience of playing the game. And also from a perspective of, of optimism in that you actually think the games can get better. If you thought something was rotten but there was no hope of redeeming it, you're just you know, there's no reason to criticize in that point other than trying to save other people from that type of thing. But the reason I criticize board games that I think could improve or could be better or do something just poor is because I want them to get better. And that's from a perspective of actual enthusiasm about board games. And it's not the kind of negativity we see so often in nerd culture on the internet. Again, I'm going to write more about this, but that's my quick thoughts in the moment as I've been mulling over this topic. Again, if you're going to be at PAX Unplugged, I hopefully will see you there. Stop and say hi. You'll see the Thoughtful Gamer t-shirts. If you do enjoy this podcast, remember to rate and review on iTunes. Check me out on social media and check out the Patreon page where you can uh, listen into our main podcast as it's recorded live every other week if you support us on Patreon along with a bunch of other goodies including uh, being part of our Discord server where we chat about games all the time. So pitch in a couple dollars there and you'll get some nice rewards and help me out in being able to fund the Thoughtful Gamer through 2018. I'm close to my first goal of basically hitting a baseline of funding for the bare minimum of what I want to do over the next year, which isn't a lot. The goal is $80 a month in total, and I'm over halfway there so far. So any help there is appreciated. Again, we'll be back next week talking about our experience at PAX Unplugged with the entire group, and then we'll have another main podcast the week after that on the 29th. Thanks for listening, and I will talk to you again soon. Goodbye. Goodbye.